Namaste, and welcome to Power Yoga, Child's Pose. To come to a Child's Pose from hands and knees, bring the tips of the big toes together, separate the knees as wide as you comfortably can, walk the hands out in front of you so they're shoulder width apart, spread your fingers open as wide as you can, get a good grip on the towel or mat like you're holding onto something heavy with the hands. With the eyes open, the breath is relaxed, normal to less than normal breath through the nose. Take a long, slow, huge inhale through the nose. Make the lungs as big and full as you can. Make it uncomfortable. You're holding the lungs so big and full. So feel some space in the sacrum. And exhale into your yoga practice. You get soft and heavy. Sink into the earth, into the exhale. Feel like there's a weight on your tailbone, gently lengthening the spine, creating a little width in your sacrum. And just start to draw your awareness to every breath you're taking, very naturally, very innocently aware of breath. We're not concentrating on breath. We're not resisting anything as we're practicing. But I'd like you to affirm your very best practice today. Use big muscle groups to support big postures. I need you to settle in totally. Think of nothing at all. Hear with the ears. Do with the body. Come to a hands and knees position, please. Hands and knees is a posture name. We want to move with flow. So as soon as you see your hands and knees, come to hands and knees. Not sitting in the hands and the knees. Using big muscle groups to lift and support. Gaze is up off the floor. Look at me, everybody. Exhale, round your back for cat cow. Slowly exhale, all the way down to the bottom. Squeeze your abdominals, go right down to the gap at the bottom. Make it uncomfortable, hold it there. And long, slow inhale. So take your time, long, slow flow, start to finish. We're setting our flow for the entire yoga class right now. Open the chest, push the buttocks up. And long, slow exhale, beautiful. So we already have flow and we're just getting wrong. It's gonna be great today. Take your time, pranayama, deep breathing. Make it uncomfortable, we're still at the bottom of the exhale. And inhale. The way that I teach cat cow, this should be a little bit uncomfortable. You're gonna move that nice, long, slow flow, but really filling the lungs high, wide, and long, in every direction, inflating the lungs. And very slowly, use a nice Bikram, six second exhale through the nose, all the way down to the bottom. You're gonna squeeze your abdominals, use your Udiana bond at the bottom, squeeze the last little drop of breath out. And a long, slow inhale. Think of nothing at all but your breath. Using big muscle groups, practice the deep muscle groups. Exhale. And like you here, feel the flow of the yoga class. Exhale. Not separate from the part of the hands. Inhale. Musical instruments together, singing a very simple song. Happy birthday, simple. Open the chest, push the buttocks up. Exhale, one more round after this, slow down. Every round should be getting a little longer, a little deeper, a little more intense in the holds. Slowly inhale for the last time. And when you think they're as big as they can be, keep inflating, keep sipping, hold it big, full and uncomfortable. And very slowly. Squeeze all the way down to the bottom. You're going to get the last little drop of old breath out and then stay there in that uncomfortable space. Nothing moves, not even a thought. Let the breath return to normal. Beautiful. Hold, guys. Look forward, not at the floor. Square your hips and shoulders towards me. I'm just going to be, remind you, use big muscle groups to support here. Don't rest in the earth. Support yourself. Right arm forward and left leg back. They call this awkward airplane now in yoga. When I was a little kid, we called the spinal balancing. I like that because I want you to find a center line right down the middle of your body. You three are going to get picked on today, it's looking like. Claudia's going, oh joy, I get picked on by my husband. Like I don't already enough. Bring the arm and leg out to the side. This living with me is being picked on. Bring the leg as far forward as you can without lifting the hip. Don't worry about it, Rich. We're just going to settle in. So we're always reinventing our yoga practice today, guys. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday or the day before. Get your gaze up, though. Look up. Get your eyes off the floor. Look up. And look up. And reach forward and back and square your hips and shoulders immediately. And look up and lift up. Continue to breathe as you look up and lift up. Sometimes it's kind of tempting to hold the breath in backward bends. Mike, can you lift up a little more? you got a lot of muscle you're packing there. Is that the CrossFit? And hands and knees looking forward, not at the floor. Square your shoulders, strong through core. Bring the left arm forward and right leg back. I can't joke about CrossFit anymore. Any, huh? <laughs> All right, stay strong. I like it. There's definitely going to be an influence here. This is really working. The classes that we're having here are just really powerful classes. It's such a nice energy here already. So our job is to bring a nice grounded energy into the room today because the energy is already here. Bring the arm and leg out to the side. And you just work with that. So again, lifted and strong through core right now. 
not collapsing into the earth ever. We're always using big muscle groups to lift big postures. Eyes forward. That looks good, Mike. As soon as I said something, your posture's improved. And reach forward and back, squaring the hips and shoulders. Look up and lift up. Julie's got a nice little smile on her face. Look up, lift up. Breathe. Just nice, relaxed breath right now. Hands and knees looking forward. Alex, you're working hard. Move to a plank posture. <laughs> you work out? No? Left hand to center, left knee on the ground under the hip. Look at the tip of the right thumb and rotate your right hand up. Good. Overtraining. Lift through the right middle rib cage. I've just very recently in my life, I don't know, the last couple of few years, realized that I've overtrained for my entire life. I'm getting more out of my workouts, actually doing less. They're really intense still, but I. I don't, I don't train as much as I used to. I'm getting a lot more out of my workouts. Keep your core strong and lift your leg up if you want to and reach your right arm forward. It's called extending the posture, utita. Wrapping the right lat around towards your chest. I'm trying to stay flat using your core. Rich, that's a good fall. Rich just fell on his butt. That's the right way to fall. If you fall, fall on your butt. That's a good fall. I like that. And bring the foot down and hand up. Fall back again if you fall. Look at your thumb. Look at your thumb. You're not looking at your thumb. Rich, look at your thumb. Just stay right here, guys. So everybody should have their foot down, hand up, looking at the tip of the thumb right now. And not impatient for release. Feel how much better that is when you get a drishti? And rotate the right hand down. Basically, replace the left hand with the right hand. Bring the right knee on the ground under the hip. Look at the tip of the left thumb and rotate the left hand up. Lift it through the left middle rib cage this time. So being repetitive, we're using big muscle groups to support big postures. I want you to feel space out of both wrists, out of your right wrist and elbow joint. You're creating space as you lift and push away out of your left wrist and elbow joint. Keep your core strong, advancing the posture here if you did it on the other side. Beautiful. So you, need a, you still need a drishti. The trick to this posture is you're warming your gazing point up, your drishti. Your eyes cannot move. Fall back. Fall back if you fall. Lift into a sweet spot, but if you fall, fall back. Foot down, hand up. Nice view, bud. Look at the tip. Foot down, hand up. Now, everybody, I want you to stare at the tip of your thumb. Get strong through your core, lift through the left middle rib cage, any easy, relaxed breath and awareness of it. Again, fall back if you fall on your butt. And rotate back down. There's nothing easy about that one. The eyes should be forward, not at the floor here, folks. Squeeze your core and pivot to downward facing dog. And immediately, so just come right to down dog and immediately stretching your mat long in your down dog, wrapping the lats around towards the chest so it feels as if the middle back is wide and your chest muscles are active in down dog and then start to walk it out here. Walk it out, you can squat it out, rock the hips out a little bit. And then onto the tips of the big toes, continuing to stretch the mat long. It's tempting to let the weight come forward because it's easier. You don't have to push as hard, but we don't want it to be easier. We want it to be correct. We're always practicing technically correct. Never easier, never with a sense of false flexibility. So like I'm taking you by the hips, lifting you up and pulling you back right now. And then pivot your heels back down to down dog. And everybody, with a nice flow together, just squeeze your core. And like you're just pivoting from hips and shoulders, pivot to a plank. Looking forward, gazes forward, and come to plank on your forearms. Plank on the forearms. Gaze up, eyes up, eyes up. Unless it isn't healthy for your neck, I like eyes up, eyes up. And ideally, hands are shoulder width apart. If you want to interlace your fingers, that's fine. It's a little bit easier. You can Apart, you're using a little more lats. So everybody, I want you to get strong through core right now and lift your thighs up. Not lift your hips up or butt up. Lift your thighs up. And if your knees are on the ground, this is not healthy for you to have the knees off the ground right now. Lift your thighs up, Rich. Then you're going to squeeze your elbows and knees together and really get your core active. I can almost get my core more active with my knees on the ground, to be honest with you right now. And we're just going to hold this for a few moments, building heat right now. I want to build heat and warm your core up. So this is abs you're doing right now. I've got a few people here that could probably hold it the entire class if they wanted to. Keep your core strong. Only if it doesn't collapse you to the floor, bring your right arm up and reach forward. If it collapses you, there's no reason. If you have to come out of it and come back into it, that's fine. You come out of it and you come back into it. Nice, John. And bring the right arm down and left leg up if you had the right. It's not more or less correct to be lifting one arm up right now. It's what you need to do. Pamela wants me to sit on her back right now. I'm not going to do it, though. True? And bring the left arm down. Bring the right leg up. We're just going to go right through. So guys, stay strong through core. This is challenging to everybody. It's challenging to me as well. And bring the right leg down. 
and bring the left leg up. We're almost done already. Again, it's fine to have knees on the ground, but squeeze your core. Get nice and active if you're doing that. Left leg down. Come to hands and knees. And pivot to downward facing dog. Boom, boom. Down dog. And feel your core. Feel your thighs. Feel your abs. Nice and strong. Move the left foot to center. Lock the right leg out. Reach through the ball of the right foot for a three-legged dog. It's going to be a, just a short three-legged dog, but like a dog would stretch. Really feel that nice space all down the right side of the body, pushing and reaching. And return the right foot to the left. Lock the left leg and reach back. Stretch back. Like I'm taking your left ankle and pulling you back. I want you to come back out of the wrist, out of the elbow joint. And then step the left foot up between the hands. Step the right foot up. Come to the top of the towel or mat. You can take several steps, but feet hip wind. Hold your elbows, hang in ragdoll pose. Like the head is a heavy dead weight, a bowling ball attached to the spine. I encourage most of you to bend the knees or soften the knees a little bit in this posture. If your legs are straight and you have deep forward bends, the weight is forward in the balls of the feet, and we're pulling the lower abdomen towards the thighs right now, getting the back nice and flat. Let the hands slip away from the elbows now. And on an inhale, begin your process of rounding up slow enough that you can feel each and every vertebra stacking on top of the last. But as efficiently, as effectively as you can do that, slow down. It's very important, the upper back and the neck stack nicely. When that does happen, do not hurry if you're still coming up. Right foot back to left, toes and heels together. Establish Tadasana, the mountain pose. Here we go, folks. Inhale the arms out, back and up, over the head. Touch the palms, look up, stretch up. Nice, tight grip. Exhale, long swan dive. Chin away from chest, flat back. Just like our cat cow, move together like a wave. Inhale, halfway, lift, look forward, lengthen the spine, release your sacrum, and step or jump back, lowering slowly all on an exhale, then pausing, then just pause. Inhale, long, slow, controlled flow, and exhale over the toes, you go. Usable muscle, well, usable muscle. Just a nice, smooth A series, so just like cat-cow, that's smooth, that's simple. Soften the knees, coil of spring, look out ahead of you. Step, jump, float, if you're cloud, float, nice. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen and flatten. Exhale, deeper fold. Inhale, come up, just come right up, no rounding. Everybody inhale up, palms touching now. And long, slow, look forward, moving with the exhale, flat back to the floor. Halfway lift, inhale, lengthen the spine. Step or jump back, lowering slow, smooth, and controlled. Inhale, move with me. And exhale, over the toes you go. That's beautiful flow. B series, soften the knees, look out ahead of you. Step, jump, don't be afraid to fall forward, learning to float. Inhale, halfway lift. Just stay with that nice, smooth breath count. Exhale to deeper fold. Inhale, come up with a flat back. Excuse me, chair pose, right into chair pose. Coming into Utkatasana, the fierce pose that we're doing. That's my one error for the year. Sit a little bit lower, lift the chest a little bit higher. I quit worrying about mistakes so long ago, I don't remember how many decades it was. Sit down a little bit deeper, lift the chest a little bit higher. We can't worry about making mistakes in life. Do what seems nearest given right. Sit a little lower. What's right is what seems nearest given right, and that can change, change very rapidly moment by moment is the truth. Sit a little bit lower. Lift the chest a little bit higher. Easy breath as you ease into your posture. Breathe. Everybody, ease a little lower. Push the buttocks back. Lift the chest up. Settle into Utkatasana. And fold smoothly with the exhale. Come down. Halfway lift. Inhale. Step or jump, lower, riding the exhale to controlled chaturanga. Inhale, Cloudy, you like that dialogue. To exhale, you gonna steal that from me? Three-legged dog to warrior one, inhale the right leg up. Lunge the right foot, drop the left heel, inhale the arms out, back and up. So ideally moving with that same nice flow that we're coming up from our forward bends or into our fierce pose, 
moving with the inhale. Hips are square as the arms are coming out, back and up. Draw the abs and middle ribs and flatten the back. Arms are locked out, so ideally palms coming together nice and tightly, lengthening the arms from the elbows. Again, we have a tight grip here. Bikram based yoga. Bikram loves nice, tight grips, compact postures. Some of y'all can square the hips a little bit better. If you have really tight hips, the, foot can be, the heel can be a little bit wide. Some of you have it a little wide. I like that. And exhale, warrior two. Now the heels are going to come into a nice line. Look forward, not down. Watch your knee bowing in. If you have tight hips, knee wants to bow in. So I've got a, a bunch of y'all that, that your knees are bowing in a little bit right now. It's tight hips. You just have to be aware of it. Every time you do the posture, same thing as standing bow. Your foot's going to want to pivot in a little bit. Make it nice and big. Right thigh all the way parallel. This is a, we do a lot of warrior two around here. Strong athletic posture. We're using core strength, folks. Upper thighs, abs, lots of core strength happening here. Get a nice tight squeeze going and turn your palms up. Reach forward over the right leg. Continuing to pull back on your right heel, not just settling into your right quadricep. So again, we've got that tight squeeze and lift happening. Breathing into a burn, not avoiding a burn. Slide on your wall, reverse the posture. Reach space down the right side of the body. Reach a compression down the left side, just like a Bikram standing half moon. And again, you really have to be aware of me wanting to bow in here. You want to come on into that front leg a little bit. Well, I'm going to pick on you if you're showing up. You got a nice practice. I've got to keep you sharp. Inhale together. Don't be in a hurry. And cartwheel to a plank, lowering all on same exhale. No hurry. There's lots of time. Inhale, there's so much time. We never have to be in a hurry. To exhale, roll back over the toes you go. Exact same thing on the left. Inhale the left leg up. Let's have a little tighter flow. Lunge the left foot, drop the right heel, and move together, just like coming up from forward bend. And again, coming into your very best version of a warrior one pose. The hips are square to the front of the space, knee tracking over the toes. Pulling back on the left heel a little bit, your front heel in warrior one. It's more vivid when we open the hips up to squeeze, but we're pulling back a little bit, getting the hamstring active in warrior one as well. I'm really fussy about strong mula and uddiyana bond in your warrior one. Abdominal lock, right? Lifting the pubic on the navel and abdominal lock. Flat supported spine. Some of you need to get your palms a little tighter. Nice tight grip, lengthening arms from elbows. Alex, you hiding from me today? And exhale, warrior two. Arms over the legs. Seems like it. Make it nice and big. So the most common thing that I see that could be that could be improved in warrior twos is it just needs to be bigger and stronger and more athletic. The left thigh is all the way parallel to the floor, and we're tightly squeezing the heels together, feeling that nice lift up. Strong core, Mula Udiana Bond are really working in our warrior poses, all of them, especially warrior three, right? Julie, you got that nice smile through the whole class. Turn your palms up and reach forward over the left leg. And keep pulling back in the heel. So again, we want a nice squeeze rich. That looks real good now. You're giving it space. Feel the space you're giving it? So warrior twos want space. Make sure you're giving it space. Also, Mike, keep that squeeze happening, guys. Keep that squeeze. And slide on your wall. Reverse the posture. So as you're reversing, I want you to think about creating space down the left side of the torso for the vital organs. And you're thinking about creating a nice compression for the vital organs on the right side of the torso. Breathing easily into the left middle rib cage right now. Left lung's wide open. You don't need to breathe like a Bikram triangle. Inhale together. Stay here. And cartwheel down. Moving forward. All kind of exhale. Controlled. Slow down. Fire your thighs, Rich. Inhale. I need you to get those thighs fired, my chaturanga. To exhale over the toes. Folks, I'm really adamant about thighs being lifted and chaturanga and knees being down because I've been doing this for 20 years, and when people collapse the posture, I see them have low back issues. Everybody that does it long enough ends up having low back issues. Active thighs support the sacrum, especially in back bends, right? But that low plank, active thighs, active thighs, active thighs. They can't be too strong. What do we do next? Warrior one to three today. Inhale the right leg up. Lunge the right foot, drop the left heel, and just move with flow to tight warrior one and push and lift together. My dialogue is push and lift, but I really don't push. I lift and lengthen. I lift my leg and I lift the chest and I get nice and long. So if it's messing you up that there's not a mirror, there's not traditionally. The outside knuckle of the thumb is your drishti. The outside knuckle of the thumb is your drishti, or me if you're Christian. She doesn't like me as a drishti, but she's going to use it anyway. And step back. That's beautiful. 
You've never done that better. Warrior one was a real nice posture. And turn it into a lunge today. Anjane Asana, it's called. Feet are hip width. Make sure they're not too close. And we don't want them too wide either, but too close, we want the sacrum to have a little space and it's easier to balance, right? And we're going to do some lunge push-ups so we have to balance. Lock the back leg all the way. Maybe we won't do lunge push-ups. Just make a nice lunge. Lock it out and start to sit down into it. If you have a healthy knee, I like the knee to come over the toes a little bit. And bring the left knee to one inch off the ground and hold it. Honest inch. And squeeze it and burn it and lock it. We're just doing three here. One inch off the ground. Hold it. Everybody burn. Stay there. And squeeze it and really burn it on the lock. And one more time to an inch off the ground and hold it. Hold it and breathe. Look at this poise. And squeeze it. Bond it all the way like you have no knee, young lady. Bring the prayer to the heart. And three more. Bring the left knee to one inch off the ground. You can bring the knee down if you need to. Do no harm. And lock it. I like you doing that. Do no harm. Bring the left knee to one inch off the ground. Always tell the truth. Do no harm. Lock the left leg and really burn it. And bring the left knee to one inch off the ground for the last time. And lock it all the way. Inhale together. And hands on the mat, moving down and forward all smoothly on an exhale. Inhale, come to up dog. Look all the way back. Pull the chest forward, shoulders down and back. And exhale, roll back over the toes, press back. Best down dog in this moment. Inhale the left leg up. Same thing, folks. Lunge the left foot, drop the right heel. Tight warrior one. Tight, compact, strong core. Lift and lengthen to warrior three. Again, if you're pushing, let it be effective. But it's this lifting and lengthening that we want. Using big muscle groups, just get right back into it. I don't care if you fall out of a posture. I care the attitude that you pick it back up with. Lift into it, long and strong. Arms up, long and strong. you, you, you got to care about it as much on this side. Here, this might help. Is that better? And warrior one, <laughs> move to warrior one. Nope. And turn it into a lunge. Heel up, hip forward. I messed you up because I took your drishti away. It was better on the first side. Wrap the lats around. Lock the back leg so you're balancing too high. And bring the right knee to one inch off the ground and hold it. Do no harm, but burn it up. And lock the back right leg. And bring the right knee to one inch off the ground. What was our motto? Do no harm, but take no shit. And lock the back right leg all the way, all the way. Squeeze it and burn it. I thought it was funny. And bring the right knee to one inch off the ground and hold it. Sometimes only I think my jokes are funny, though. And lock it. Burn it. Burn it. Prayer to the heart. Sit a little lower without bending the knee first. And then three pumps. One inch off the ground and hold it. We're just going to do them. Boom, boom, boom. And squeeze it and burn it. Everybody burns. Make it burn. Don't avoid the burn. One inch off the ground and hold it. Love the burn. Don't avoid the burn. And squeeze it and burn it and hold it. And one more time. One inch off the ground and hold. And squeeze it all the way. So lock your back leg all the way. Lift the quadriceps. Squeeze the hamstring against the bone. Sit down into it. Find that low center of gravity. Inhale. And hands on the floor, move down and forward smoothly together. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Guys, that is world class power yoga, folks. That's just as good as it gets. Triangle pose, inhale the right leg up. Let's keep working. Lunge the right foot, left heel, 45. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Straighten the right leg as you're lifting, lengthening, and rotating open. Bring your chin into the left shoulder, lift it through the left middle rib cage. This posture would feel really good to me in this sequence right here. We want that nice, there should never be any struggle in an open a triangle pose, open chain rotation. The left lung is wide open, you don't have to breathe really hard to get a lot of oxygen into your body right now, just a nice easy breath. But strong core, again the dialogue is lift, lengthen. Keep the chest lifted and rotate the left hand down. The hips are already squaring themselves to the mirror, go to the front of the space. Go ahead and do it. Square the hips. Take your right ankle with the left hand. And with the chest lifted, reach straight up. Don't think. Do. 
You did this beautiful last night, Pam. We'll do it again. Yesterday's prayers aren't any good today. Doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Am that's beautiful. Tuck the left shoulder under and look up. Use the if you have neck stuff, use the range of motion you've got, Julie. Let's tuck the shoulder all the way under. Thank you. Why weren't you doing that? Jeez. And rotate. You made that look really easy. The right hand down. Move into balancing airplane pose. That means you should always be doing that. That means you're gonna be lazy. No one likes a lazy genius, right, Claudia? Looking at the floor, there's a wall behind you. Open right onto it if you're going to do half moon. So the way, people lose their balance in process getting into half moon. Once you're in it, you can find a sweet spot. But people are too careful getting it. We want to get clean posture to clean posture. Lift the chest and leg and just come back to airplane. So again, I don't want a lot of process going through the motions. Just in and out. Rotate. Chest lifted. Right hand up, left hand down. Leg lifted, chest lifted. Strong core. Airplane. Chest up. Keep your leg up. Donna, the leg gets heavy. You just forgot about the leg. Look at the floor and stand up. Bring the left knee up into the chest, into the shoulder. Just stand up. Bring the left knee up. Interlace your fingers around the shin. Look up and get a good drishti. Balancing is a little tricky when you don't have a mirror for you to it. You need a good drishti. You need something good to look at. If you've fallen out, pick it back up. Take your right hand. Reach over the top of the left knee or foot and grab the outside knife edge of the foot. If you can, chest must stay lifted. Turn the head, turn the body, and extend the arm and leg. I just call it a balancing twist. Head turns first. So I want you to challenge yourself to look all the way to the tip of the thumb as you lift the chest. I don't care if you straighten the leg all the way. I care you're maintaining the tadasana through the torso. So chest lifted, more important than straight leg. All the way back, Kristen. Open it up. You can do this all the way. Now come back to center. Soften the knee so it doesn't pull the shoulder down. You've got to keep the chest up. And standing pose. Folks, if you're going past your standing pose, everybody, this is a yoga posture. Practice yoga in a yoga posture, please. If you're going past your flexibility, you're going to pull yourself out of balance. You're pulling the shoulder forward, chest forward, We're trying, and we try to balance too high. We're always maintaining tadasana, balancing low. Right hand on the right hip. Pick up the left knee nice and high. Either interlace your fingers around the shin or hook your, toe, hook your big toe with your first two fingers and thumb. It is just fine to do this. And if you're getting reacquainted, this is just fine today. If you have the toe, extend the heel forward. Again, maintaining Tadasana is more important than how far you can extend the leg. I want you to feel like you're standing and stretching. Donna, nice. Bring the leg out to the side. I haven't seen you for a long time. It's nice to have you back. Oh, I messed you up. I shouldn't be talking to you. Lift the chest up. Get your drishti. Don't let me steal your piece. Keep the chest up. So everybody needs a good drishti. Look over the right shoulder if you've advanced practice. Gaze back, then leg back. Then lock the right leg out parallel. Both hands on the hips. Hold it nice and high. Use your core. Both hands on the hips. Hold it nice and high. That's okay, Rainy. I haven't seen you for a while either. Hinge at the hips and fold. Balancing airplane. Lift your chest. We always lift a balancing airplane. Any way you're coming into it, you're lifting into it. And step back to warrior one. That's all, folks. Warrior one. An open warrior two. Big warrior two. Look forward. Look forward. Eyes off floor. So I don't care what happened. I don't care what's going to happen. This is your best example of a warrior two pose in this moment. Make it nice and big. Get that nice tight squeeze going through your heels. And bring the right elbow to the inside of the right knee. Chest stays lifted. Look up. Elbow to knee. Push the knee back with the elbow so I can immediately spot those of you that have a beak from practice by this posture. And bind your half mind. It's very different. The hips are in a different position, but I can tell by your shoulder. And again, not forcing a bind. There's no reason to force binds. If it binds, it binds. If it doesn't, it doesn't, guys. But we don't want to force the binds. You're just going to rip the door off the hinges. We want to ease it open. If you are supporting it as little as possible, as much as necessary, thank you, Luba. Bound extend. Randy, you're practicing real nicely. Press back to big, beautiful warrior two pose. If you had more time, I'd try to train you to be a teacher. I know you don't have the time. And cartwheel to a plank. Move the left hand to center. Stack the right foot on top of the left. Look at the tip of the right thumb and rotate the right hand up. If you're going to modify it, you, if you have to support it, bring your foot back behind you and support it. Do it a little differently. And this is a genuine arm balance. There's nothing easy about this. If you want to advance it, you can advance it. You can scissor the leg up. You can hook the big toe. Beautiful. You can bring the foot to the inside of your upper thigh like a Virxasana tree pose, but keep the lift. Now, guys, be tough right now. Fall back if you fall. Lift into it. Lift into it right now. Be tough. There it is, Mike. 
and rotate back. I was talking to you and you just did it. Nice. Squeeze your core. Look forward. And lower slowly. Move forward. Up dog. Nothing drops below elbows and chaturanga, please. To down dog. Chaturanga are low hold. There's really very little more important in this class than a good strong chaturanga to me, folks. Nothing drops below elbows. We don't collapse the posture. Triangle on the left leg. Inhale the left leg up. Lunge the left foot. Right heel. 45 degrees. Straighten both legs. As you're straightening, you're lifting, lengthening, rotating open. Some of you a little bit jackknifed. So lifted through the chest. That's it. You're self-corrected. Breathing easy into your right middle rib cage. And rotate the right hand down. Chest stays lifted. Square the hips and shoulders to the front of the space first. Take your left ankle with the right hand. I don't want you to twist. I want you to tuck the shoulder and to lift the chest and reach straight up. I don't want you to think about twisting. Because it's from the waist up. You just, just tuck the right shoulder under. But look up. Commit to the gaze. Bring your chin into the left shoulder and really commit to that lift through the left middle rib cage. Get out of that bottom shoulder all the way. Lift up out of the bottom arm. Reach up and lift up. And rotate the left hand down. Stay with me. Move into bouncing airplane pose. Don't start talking to yourself. Bouncing airplane. There's a little opportunity for that monkey mind or mortal mind, that self-talk to get in there. We don't want that. We want to keep moving and stay present. Look at the earth. Lift the chest and leg and open onto the wall. Don't get stuck in that muddy halfway. Get all the way into your yoga posture. Lifted through chest. Stay right there. If you're in an airplane, stay there. Open it, Luba. Open it. Find the wall. Find the wall. Beautiful. Airplane. It's easier. Lift the leg. Lift the leg. Now the leg is heavy. Rotate. Lift the chest and lift the leg. You're lifting against gravity. They just get heavier here. They just get heavy. Lift into gravity, Kristen. Nice. Airplane. And stand up. Look at the floor. Bring the right knee up. Into the chest. Into the shoulder. Interlace your fingers and bring it up. Last thing to come up is the gaze. The last thing to come up is the gaze. Left hand reaches over the top of the right knee or foot, if you can get the foot, whatever you did on the other side. The head turns first. The body's going to follow, then open the body, and then extend the arm like The head turns first. Body follows the eyes, the way I teach martial arts, the way I teach yoga. Body follows the eyes. I used to teach people to shoot with, no, with their eye in the dark because body follows the eyes automatically. Lift the chest and extend into the posture and come back to a center position. And keep your chest up. Don't drop out of that posture. You're practicing nicely. Release nicely. Standing pose. It's important. These are good postures here. Release nicely. What makes a finished yoga practice? Every little thing. Every little thing. Every breath. Every mountain pose. Every dead pose. Every transition. Left hand on the left hip. Left leg locks. Pick up the right knee nice and high. Either hook the big toe or interlace around the shin. Please be clear, it is not more or less correct to hook the toe or interlace around the shin. Maintain the Tadasana and extend your right heel forward. Chest lifted, shoulders square to the front of the space. Open it. That's all right. You're just trying to go past your flexibility alone, pulling yourself off balance. So bend, pull, 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 change gaze. If it's in your practice, change gaze. Stay active, chest lifted, bicep active. Gaze back, then leg back. Now stay tough here, guys. Lock the right leg out, parallel to the floor. Both hands come onto the hips. Hold it nice and nice. Squeeze it and burn it and burn it and burn it and burn it some more. Higher. Pick it up. Hinge it, the hips and fold. Lift the arms, lift the chest, lift the leg. Come to a nice, solid, balancing airplane. So the gaze is there's sweat coming off your forehead, and there really should be. That's where you're looking right now. Warrior one, left foot forward, move to warrior one. Make it a nice warrior one, care about it. Warrior two, exhale. Straight arms over the legs, open it up big and beautiful. Look forward, chin over the shoulder, knee tracking over toes. Nice tight squeeze through the heels happening here. And left elbow to the inside of the left knee. John, you're sure practicing nicely. We tend to do best that, which we do most often. That makes sense, doesn't it? John's been practicing a lot. Bind or half bind. So again, we don't, we don't ever want to force a bind. We don't want to jackknife the body and force the shoulder. We, there's, there's attachments that are just going to just tear them apart doing that. We're always easing the door open through process, through practice, 
We're never ripping the door off the hinges with ego or impatience. That's one for your dialogue too there. That was pretty good, huh? Somebody should write this stuff down, Alex. If you're bound to extend, push back the big warrior twos. People ask me all the time, they'll come out and say, you said something about this during class. And I have zero idea what I said, absolutely zero. And cartwheel to a plank, I mean literally zero idea what I said. Right hand moves to center, stack the left foot on top of the right, look at the tip of the left thumb, and rotate the left hand up. I was very blessed to have some really wonderful teachers in my life. And I really have to give all the credit for whatever we're doing to all the wonderful teachers I've had. I've really, really, really been blessed with wonderful teachers. And advance, I try not to change one word I try not to debauch it in one way. If you change even one word, you're changing what they taught you. Push the big toe down. Lean down, back into your advanced variations. Nice, stay right there, Randy. I know you're working hard there. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Breathe, stay there. Hips up, Mike. Hips up, Mike. You're on the other side. Hips up, Mike. Hips up. And rotate nice. That's what I wanted to a plank. That last little bit's a big deal. Engage your core, please. And lower slowly. Move the body forward. Inhale, come to up dog, look all the way back, draw to the upper back. Exhale, come to down dog. Moving through A series to standing, soften the knees, coil the spring, look out ahead of you. And step, jump, give them a good float, Claudia. Ah. Inhale, halfway, not your best, but there was effort. Exhale, foam. Inhale, come up flat back, there's nothing easy about that. Come up, everybody. Prayer to the heart, arms to your side. The most important posture in our standing series is mountain pose. We'll just call it standing pose. I like standing pose now. Left hand reaches up, right elbow on the right hip, palm faces up. Bring the, no twisting, bring the right hand straight back behind you. The right shoulder's already gonna drop back behind the left. Pick up the right ankle from the inside without twisting your wrist. Get a good drishti. Kristen wanted me to move, so I'm gonna move. And kick straight back and reach straight forward. Open it up. Get a good drishti. Now Rainy wants me to move. Everybody kick and reach. So get a good drishti and kick so hard you could only fall forward. Feel a bow as you lift through the chest, kicking and reaching. Left shoulder into the chin. Now everybody kick so hard you can only fall forward, but lift your chest and lift your left arm. Kick. Randy, beautiful. Lift and reach. Come back out to a nice base. Come out to a nice base. But look at that foot pivoting. Look at your base foot. Randy, look at your base. There it is. And standing pose, that's tight hips. I do the same thing, you just have to be aware of it. It's tight hips. Left hand reaches up. Excuse me, right hand reaches up. Left elbow on the left hip palm, well, that's two. Bring the left hand back behind you, grab the ankle from the inside. Given all things are just pretty good. Touch the knees together, lift the chest up. So get a nice big reach happening here. That reach is so important. And open up a bow. Kick straight back, so keep the knee in Luba, open it up. And again, I, every time I do this, I have to think about a good foot lock. I've got tight hips, and the, bo the foot just kind of wants to bow in if you have tight hips. So just push the toe down. Now just kick. Kick. A bow. I don't care if you fall. Pick up a base if you fall, and kick so hard you can only fall forward. Coming to the last part of our posture, drive your own car. Stay on the kick. Drive your own car. Now reach for your base. Come out nicely, Randy. Come out. Lift. Reach. Lift. Lift. Bring the knee back. I don't care. Standing pose. That's beautiful. That's a good word. Randy wants to do a second set. Right hand reaches up. Left elbow on the, excuse me. Left hand reaches up. Let right elbow on the right hip. I don't have a, it's weird in front of you guys. Bring the right hand back behind you. I taught behind a class for 20 years and all of a sudden everything's kind of backwards. Touch the, true. Touch the knees together. Kick straight back. Reach straight forward. Kristen, have you experienced that? I think all our teachers have experienced that a little bit. Julie, yes? Kick and reach. Kick and reach. I was trained not to be in front of a class when I teach. Kick, but there was also a mirror. Kick, 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 kick. This is it right now. Best bow, best bow. Now lift and reach. Please come back to a good base, everybody. If you've fallen out, pick up a base. This is important right now. And standing pose. Opposite hand reaches up. I'm playing it safe. Left elbow on the left hip, palm up. Bring the left hand back behind you. Pick up the ankle from the inside. Yes, I didn't know which hand it was. Touch your knees together, open the shoulders, and just make a big bow. Short set. Lift the chest up and make a big bow. Chest lifted, right shoulder and the chin kick. So hard you could only fall forward and do it now. 
Kick the body forward. Lift the chest up. Kick, kick, kick. Come out nicely. Lift and reach for your base. You can do it. Reach for your base. Just do it. And standing pose. Dead body pose. Head to me. There's no water breaks here, guys. Let's get right into dead pose. All of that is for this. Close your eyes. And I literally don't want you to do anything. There's a very innocent intent to not do anything but breathe. Not concentrating on breath, not resisting thought or sound or anything else. Just breath. Slowly open the eyes, if your eyes are closed, and find a drishti. Find something to look at. Bend the right knee into the chest, interlace the fingers, and pull your right knee into the right shoulder, avoiding your rib cage. Flexing the toes back on your left foot. Doing this for a very different reason than Bikram does it. I'm just doing it. It's a nice transition into working hard on the floor. Good hip and back release. Bikram does this to prepare intestines for spinal strength. And we are still getting that benefit. Nice tight grips, part of the posture, folks. Find that tourniquet effect to the knuckles and joints of the hands. And release the right leg down. Bring the left leg up and change your grip since we're just doing one set. Pull the left knee into the left shoulder, again avoiding your rib cage, flexing the toes back towards your shin and the right leg. And just a nice easy breath as we open through the hip and low back. And by reaching through your right leg, you can really kind of bring it into the hip and low back. And release the left leg down. Bring both knees into the chest. Give yourself a big bear hug around your shins and try to grab your opposite elbows if you can. And then with the chin tucked, stretch your heels down towards the mat flattening the entire spine eventually from the base of your neck all the way down to your tailbone. Some of y'all are not gra grabbing your elbows. I'd like you to try as hard as you can to grab them. Pamela, if I can get mine, you can get yours. Squeeze your knees into your chest. Come on now. You're strong. You've got more muscle than me. Alex does. <laughs> Release the legs up to the ceiling. Hands under the hips, palms down. Slowly lower the legs. Take your time. Slowly lower the legs. It's not a big ab workout. Just a couple of cycles of breath. Eyes open, palms up, dead body pose. Eyes stay open for the rest of your yoga class, please. I want you to stay nice and present. There is no less flow on the floor. Here with the ears, do with the body. I don't want to get stuck in a bunch of muddy transitions today. Clean postures to clean postures is ashram yoga. Inhale the arms over that. Flex your feet back, cross the thumbs, and dive for the toes. Double pump, double exhale. Forehead to the knees. Lie down on your stomach for spinal strengthening series. This is called a cobra series. So we have a cobra's tail through most of it. First posture is Bhujangasana Cobra. Lock the legs out. Hands under the shoulders. Arms close. Elbows high. Everybody squeeze your legs and make a cobra's tail. Exhale through the nose. Inhale, lift. Pulling, not pushing. Push your feet into the floor. And really lock the legs out as you pull the elbows back towards your hips. Breathe. Nice flat back. And come down slowly. You've got to breathe there. Some holding of the breath. Left ear on the ground. Look right. So I don't have to see the body mechanics of the breath to know if the breath's not moving. It's, it's really kind of just something that we're teaching yoga for a long time. It, the energy around you kind of stagnates when you hold the breath. It's, it's a very interesting thing, but you can see it. The energy just kind of stagnates. We want to keep the prana moving by keeping the breath moving. Chin flat on the mat. Set up the same posture right down to your good cobra's tail. This time bring the heels of the hands back to your hips all the way to the waistline. And make the cobra's tail. Exhale through the nose. Push on inhale. Push with your triceps this time. Now you're pushing hard with triceps. Some of y'all need to slide the heels of the hands back to your waistline a little bit more so we're stacking the joints. And squeeze the legs all the way. 
get any kind of bend out of the knees. Lift the upper thighs up as you push a little harder with triceps to bring the shoulders up. Upper thighs up. Upper thighs up. Slowly come down. Right ear on the ground. Look left. Dead body pose. And chin flat on the mat. Pick up the hips, bring your arms beneath the body, palms facing down, elbows all the way beneath the body. Elbows all the way into the body, palms down. If that's the whole posture is to get your elbows under the body, let it be the whole posture just to lay on your elbows. Relax your left leg, look forward, look forward. You're not burying the face, look forward. Relax the left leg, lock the right leg, and pick up the locked right leg. Yes, it's still power yoga. So make this challenging by making a solid lamp post of a right leg and bring the right leg down. Relax the right leg, lock the left leg, and pick up the locked left leg. So stretch it back, lock it out, squeeze the muscle against the bone, both the quad and hamstring, and bring the left leg down. Bury the face of the towel like you're kissing the towel. Move the hands closer to the knees, move the elbows closer towards each other. Only if it's healthy for you. Start to push with your upper back. Lock the legs. If it feels good, you can push. If it doesn't feel good, back off. You've got to be hot for this one. But if it feels good to push, then really push. Those of you pushing, as hard as you can push. Push into it. Breathe into it. And come down slowly. And release by bringing the left ear onto the ground and looking right. It's a dead body pose. It's a dead body pose. Chin flat on the mat. Hands behind the back, interlace your fingers. Straight arms, straight legs. Make a cobra's tail for the last time in your class. Arms high, cobra's tail. Inhale, lift. So I want you to have a solid cobra's tail when you're laying on the mat before you lift it up. I don't want you to lift it and make it. You've already got it. And there's nothing easy about laying on the mat making a good cobra's tail. The only thing ideally on the floor right now would be your pelvic girdle. Lifting the lower abdomen up, lifting your upper thighs up, lifting the arms up. Bring the arms out to the side like airplane wings. See if you can look up to lift the chest up. There it is. And hands out in front of you, shoulder it. Feel that difference? That's a huge difference. Look up and lift up. You can just go deeper now. Everybody, lift one more rib up. Lift the upper thighs up and breathe. Breathe, breathe. Slowly come down. Right into a release. There's no dying pose. Right here on the ground, look left. There is no dying pose in yoga. No process to it. Just done. Just done. That's such a big part of the art of the art, guys. You settle right into the dead pose for maximum benefit and for ease. Chin flat on the mat. Bend the knees. Heels to the hips. Grab your feet. Thumbs with the fingers two inches below the toes. Feet, knees, heels. Six inches apart. Doesn't matter how big or small you are in Bikram Yoga. Press the lower abdomen into the mat. And on inhale, kick straight up. Get a vice grip and kick straight up. Look up, kick up. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Give it a good kick, Kate. Kick, kick, kick. So I want you to kick as hard as you can. Pick your feet up with your hands. Donna, beautiful bow. Kick your pelvic girdle up. So as you lift through the chest, ideally, eventually, just the lower abdomen in contact with the ground right now. Breathe it up, open it up. These are some nice bows. Up, 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 up. And down slowly. Also, beautiful bows. Left ear on the ground. Look right. Really nice. Have a release. All the benefit comes from the release. Happens right now. The face, to, the face and the jaw are soft as if the mouth is full of water. And chin flat on the mat. One more set. Bend the knees. We'll do a, actually same posture. Grab your feet. Thumbs with fingers. Clamp down. Exhale. Push the low abdomen to the floor. And kick straight up. Short second set. Really go for it. So the ideal here, eventually, just your lower abdomen in contact with the mat. The pelvic girdle is up off the earth. The middle ribs, the lower rib cage is up off the ribs. So look up, go up, strong kick. Kick forward, kick forward, kick forward. There it is. And come down. So that last part done is what I want, that forward. Right here on the ground, look left. Awfully nice to have you back. I've learned a lot during this whole whatever you want to call it that we've been through. I've learned a lot. Anybody else learn? It's given us a little bit of an opportunity to really reassess what's important, 
what's effective, right? What are our needs? What are our needs now? We don't need the heat anymore, folks. It's nice, but we don't need the heat to produce our effects anymore. This yoga is powerful. And that's something that I have definitely discovered during this time. We don't need the heat anymore. Roll over onto your back. I think the days of a little hot box are over. Bottoms of the feet are flat to the ceiling. This is looking like a nice environment to me. Pull the knees down, lots of nice fresh air and space, right? That's what we want. Pull the knees down. I don't think that this corona thing is going anywhere. I think it's going to be like the flu. They're all going to want to get us to get, take a shot every year for it. It's going to be a corona season. <laughs> Pull the knees down. So if you all are under the illusion that things are going to ever go back to normal, this is the new normal. Pull the knees down, kick into it. Might settle down a little bit, but I think this is here to stay. So we adjust. Release the tension first, stretch your legs out, arms at your side, palms up, eyes open. So we adjust. What works now? Dead pose. Everybody come to dead pose. It's not relearning the old maze. It's a new maze that we have to learn. It's not relearning the old maze. It's a new maze. Inhale your arms over that. Flex your feet back. Cross the thumbs. Dive for the toes. Double pump, double exhale. Who moved the cheese, right? Come to the top of the towel. Stand on the knees. If you haven't read a little book called Who Moved the Cheese, you really need to. It's simple to read. You can read it in the evening. Lift it. Anybody read it? Lift it through the thighs. Draw your abs and look back and go back. It's really uh, appropriate to what's going on in our environment right now. Lifted through the chest. So the inhale is such a big part. Opening up the middle rib cage, opening up the thoracic cavity. Reach back if it's in your practice to reach back. And ideally waiting for your teacher to tell you to reach back. It is not more or less correct to reach back. What is healthy for you, Randy? You've got to push your hips forward if you're going to reach back. Hips forward, hips forward, hips forward. Support your sacrum as you come up, please. Rich and nice. And when you're up, sit back, hips to heels. And turn around. Lie down. Dead body pose. I said something earlier in class, the beginning of class, that I'm going to say again. To me, every single day that I practice yoga, I'm reinventing my yoga practice. I'm reinventing my yoga practice. Always through beginner's eyes. So it's always through the eyes of a child we practice our yoga. But that's part of the balance, though, is it's your best practice, <laughs> your best version, but always looking for new experience in our practice, not just going back to the same place you were at yesterday. Where else can we go? What else can we do? What else is there to discover in our practice? One more big back bend of your choice. We're just going to cool you down and have a nice dead pose together. Boom, boom. If you're doing a camel, do the sit up, please. If you're doing a wheel, slide the shoulder blades down the back. No, nope, pinch them together. Make that socket, right? But when I say, anytime I say slide the shoulder blades down the back, I'm asking you to make a so nice solid socket for the shoulders to sit in. Push the hips up, push the chest forward. Big bows, reaching back in your camel pose. Kristen, push your hips to me, lift your chest up, really get that. Just really drive, drive head back, head back. Just really push your hips to me. Really push it. So if you slipped off, you go popping forward. And come back up supported. Nice. You didn't get picked on that much. Sit back, hips to heels. Dead body pose, boom, boom. Efficiently into dead body pose, please. Efficiently in and, out of, in and out of the dead pose. And back release of your choice. We've had a real nice flow. We want to ride that wave of energy now that we've created. And it could be that dead body pose is a back release for you. That would be just fine. And come to shoulder stand pose. Everybody do shoulder stand today unless you have a neck issue. I have an awful lot of people complain to me about this posture. Is this uncomfortable for anybody? A little bit? The throat lock is part of the posture. Okay, so I, I actually want it to be uncomfortable. We want that beak or that throat lock. Balancing the blood sugar for the end of class, so you get a second wind, and ideally you're not feeling taxed. But you have that nice, clean yoga energy after class. Letting deoxygenated blood drain from the big muscles and the legs of the heart. We're going to become oxygenated drain to your brain, and bring the feet forward towards the front of the yoga space for a plow pose, halas. A nice stretch in the neck here is okay, 
but no pain. There should be no, no sharp gotchas or anything like that. A little stretch is good. And again, the throat lock's part of this posture as well. To me, it's a little bit less when I come to this posture. I'm not exactly sure why. But you can point your toes and walk your feet forward if you'd like towards the front of the space. And come down. Bring the right knee into the chest. Left leg comes down. Or come to seated twist position if you don't feel it on your back, supine. And twist. You can do an eagle wrap or a reverse eagle wrap if you wanted to here. And it is important everybody's feeling a nice twist. I'm a little bit suspicious of some of you guys that are on your back right now that you're not getting a good twist, but since we're there, let's stay there now. Again, we've really been working the whole class for the big back bend of the big twist, getting the full range of motion back into the spine and really releasing energy, prana, through the body by opening up energy channels. And back to center position. Through the whole class, we're opening energy channels. Release the right leg down and bring the left leg up. Even acknowledged by Western medicine, they call them energy channels. They're called nadis. Close, uh, close the posture, twist. It's called a closed rotation, closed chain rotation. Reaching with your left hand, <laughs> guiding the right knee down. I'm going to, again, be a little repetitive. There's a, a few of you I'm a little suspicious aren't feeling a very good twist here. It, it's really important. We really do get that ringing the energy out of the spine feeling here at the end of class. We want to bring that kundalini into our dead pose. And back to center position. There's potential for huge kundalini here. Get a little back release. Stay with me, everybody. So I want everybody to really get present with me in the dialogue right now. Hear with the ears, do with the body, move with me and release into dead body pose. Nothing between, like I've hit a light switch, release into dead body pose. And understand clearly that you don't have to do anything but breathe because you've already done the work. Everything that we did was designed to prepare you to lie in dead body pose right now. You've done it, just breathe. Yoga is experience-based. Take a long, slow, huge inhale through the nose. Make the lungs as big and full as you can. Anchor it firmly in the self. Let go and fall. And be open to whatever your experience is today in dead body pose. Just Breathe. That's all. 